Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be creating a website that allows any user to sign in using their Google account and subscribe uh, to pay a monthly or yearly fee automatically to your application. To implement everything, we're going to be using Vue.js 3 and Firebase SDK 9, which are both the latest versions. And Firebase 9 comes with a new feature that makes it completely modular, which is better and more optimized for your application and your users. To handle all the subscription process, we're going to be using Stripe Checkout, which is a pre-built platform that you redirect your users to, and it allows you to fully customize it. This is faster to develop because we don't have to handle a lot of different variables and payments methods and things that could happen because it's already implemented in Stripe Checkout. Before we start though, don't forget that the links to the code I'm writing and the blog post for more details are in the description. If this content is useful for you, don't forget to like the video and now let's get started. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is create a new Vue.js project. For that, we're going to use npm. If you don't have npm installed in your computer, I'm going to leave you some reference links that you can go ahead and check out and see how to install uh, npm and node depending on the operating system that you're on. Once you do that, we're going to run the command to install the Vue CLI tools. And this is going to allow us to then run the command to create a new view project and that's going to be view create and the name of the folder that is going to be created with all the view files inside. Once it finishes, we're going to cd into the folder it just created and we're going to run npm run serve to start the view application. And then if you go into your browser to localhost port 8080, in, the, in my case, you're going to find the view application running correctly. If that's the case, we're going to go ahead and run code in a dot. And that's going to open this folder in Visual Studio Code, which is the text editor that we're going to be using for this project. Now we're going to go to the Firebase console and create a new project. I'm going to call it view subscriptions and disable analytics in my case because this is just for development in your case you can leave them if you want to now since we're going to be using firebase functions and these functions require uh, storage this storage is going to be billed monthly. Now um, it's going to be like two cents or something like that. So it's not a big deal. And the only difference between the blaze plan, which we're upgrading to and the spark plan, which is the free plan is that once you reach the free tier limit, you're going to start getting billed monthly, but that's not something you should worry about at the very beginning. You can still check out their pricing in their website. I'm going to leave you the link in the description, but um, it does include like a couple million invocations per month. So at the very beginning, unless you have a couple thousand uh, users, you're not going to be hitting that free tier limit. Once you upgrade the project to the Blaze plan, we're going to go to extensions and look for run payments with Stripe and then just hit install to install it in our project. It is going to show you some details about the billing and usage, but it's also going to show you uh, the resources that it, it is going to create in our project and each of these cloud functions is going to help us implement the subscriptions in our application. So for example, whenever a user signs up to the application in Firebase, a cloud function is going to also create the Stripe customer in the Stripe dashboard. And if a user pays or doesn't pay a subscription, it, this is going to be updated in Firestore automatically by a cloud function. Finally, we just have to finish setting up some parameters. We're going to set it so that it syncs new users to Stripe customers and also automatically delete uh, Stripe customer objects. And then it says we need to put in a Stripe API key, which we're going to be generating in the Stripe dashboard. In case you don't have a Stripe account, you can create one now. And once you have your account set, we're going to go to the developers tab and select API keys. And we're going to create a new restricted API key. 
I'm just gonna call it Firebase key and for the permissions we're gonna set customers to write, checkout sessions write, customer portal write, then plans and subscriptions to read and that's it just create the key. Then we're gonna reveal the key and copy it to then paste it in the extension configuration in Firebase. Then we just hit install extension and it should finish installing in around 3 to 5 minutes. Once it finishes, you're gonna see the extension settings and if you go to the function section, you should see all the different cloud functions that have been installed in your project. Now we're gonna go to the Firestore section and we're gonna enable the database in production mode. Then going back to the extension documentation, we're gonna copy these rules and paste them in the role section in Firestore database. Right after that, we're gonna go to the authentication section in Firebase and we're gonna set a new sign-in method. In this case, I'm gonna enable the Google sign-in. Okay, once we finish setting up the Firebase extension, we can go back to our project and start setting up two things, the router and the Firebase SDK. And for that, first go ahead and run view add router and this is gonna automatically add the view router to our view project. And then run npm install firebase to install the latest version of the firebase sdk then we're going to create two files one is going to be called firebase.js inside the source folder and the other one is going to be called .emv and these are going to be in charge of initializing the Firebase uh, database in the project. Going back to the Firebase project, we're going to register a new web application and this is going to give us the credentials that we're going to use to connect to the Firebase database and we need to put each of them in the .emv file as variables. So we copy the API key and we paste it in the .env as a variable with the name view app API key and it needs to start with the view app prefix so that it gets imported into the environment of the view application. Once we finish copying every credential, we're going to copy the whole thing and paste it into the firebase.js file. We're going to remove all the boilerplate by removing the comments. And then we're going to replace the strings for the variables we just created in the .env file by using the process.env and then the name of the variable. Once we do that, we're going to remove the last line uh, for the initialization and then we're going to start getting some imports from the Firebase SDK and those imports are going to be the getApps function, the getAuth function and the onAuthStateChange function. And then we want to initialize the Firebase app in case it hasn't been initialized. For that, we're going to check if there's any apps available and if there's not, just go ahead and initialize one and save it in Firebase app or in case there's one that has been initialized already, then just use that one as the Firebase app. Then we're going to use the get auth function and pass in a Firebase app in order to get an authentication instance from Firebase. Then we're going to create the get current user function. And this function returns a new promise. 
and this promise is gonna resolve into a Firebase user object in case the user is signed in. Finally, just export the three things we just created. That was the Firebase app, the Firebase auth instance, and the get current user function. Now, anytime we need any of these three, we can just import them from this file into any other file or component in our project. Then we're going to remove some more boilerplate in our project, starting by deleting the about page and then opening the home.view page and deleting everything inside and just leaving a simple template with a div that says home page. Then we're going to add the account.view page and same thing, just add a template with a div inside and that says account page. And finally, we're going to add one more page, which is going to be the signin.view page. And this is going to contain right now just a simple template with a div that says sign in. Now that we have the files created, we're going to go ahead and create the routes and for that let's go to the routes folder and then the index.js file inside and here i'm going to delete the about page that we removed and i'm going to start creating the account page route here i'm going to import the account component and put it in the route as well Then I'm going to do the same thing for the sign in page. And once we have all the routes set up, what we're going to do is we're going to add a one more property called meta. And this meta property is going to contain an object that can contain many uh, custom properties inside. For example, in this case, for the account page, I'm going to add a property called requires auth set to true. And this means that the user needs to be authenticated in order to visit the account page. And for the sign in page, I'm going to add a property called guest only, and it's also going to be set to true. And this will mean that the user has to not be signed in in order to visit the sign in page. These are custom properties and they don't work out of the box, but I'm, we're going to make them work in a second here. So for that, let's go to the bottom of the page right before the uh, export. And we're going to use the before each listener from the router. This listener receives a callback function. And basically every time the user changes routes, this callback function is going to be run. So here's where we're going to check. For example, if the user is signed in, then we redirect him to the account page. Or if the user is not signed in, then we're just going to redirect him to the sign in page. For that, we're going to first check if the route the user is going to contains the requires auth property set to true. And we're also going to check if this route the user is going to contains uh, the guest only property set to true as well. Then we're going to use the get current user function that we created before in the firebase.js file to get the user information and I'm going to import this uh, get current user function in a second. But first, let's finish the callback function by checking if the route requires authentication and there's no current user, then we're going to redirect the user to the sign in page. And then in the else if block, we're going to check if the route is for guests only. And there's currently a user object. Then we're going to redirect the user to the account page and otherwise we're just going to continue with the request as normal. Now very quickly let's go to the top part of the file and import the get current user function from the firebase.js file. Okay so this is the routing setup for uh, the authentication and one last thing we need to do is go to the app.view file and actually I'm going to delete everything that is in here because I'm not going to need it. I'm just going to leave a template tag and a router view tag that is going to be replaced by whatever uh, view you are in according to the router. Okay, now go to the sign in page. And we're going to add a button with a click event that calls a method called sign in.
in the script section we're gonna import uh, the google auth provider and the sign in with pop-up functions from the firebase sdk and we're also gonna import the firebase auth instance from the firebase.js file that we created before finally we're just gonna add the sign in method that creates an instance of google auth provider and then calls sign in with pop-up and if everything goes right we're just gonna replace the route with the account page Once that's done, we're going to run the application using npm run serve. And then we can visit localhost port 8080. And you're going to see the sign in page contains the button. And if we click it, we can log in with our Google account. And then it's going to redirect us to the account page. And if we try to visit the sign in page again, it's going to redirect us back to the account page because we're already logged in okay so i'm gonna leave it here for this video we already have the authentication set up as well as the whole firebase project with the stripe extension in the next video we're gonna be creating the stripe checkout session and the stripe customer portal sessions for the users to manage their billing and subscriptions also we're gonna be styling this up a bit more using bootstrap css Thank you very much for watching this first part and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.